So Clark, um, this is the first one, first sneak peek. This is the first sneak peek, Valerie. So uh, interesting you should ask that. This is actually the first in a series of six uh, sneak peek webinars that sort of ramp up to the conference in June. It's kind of a way to sort of stay dialed in and, um, and preview some of the content that's going to happen at the conference. That's a great way for everyone to see the quality of the education that's going to be available at NAA. And uh, thank you for including me in that. I, I think that, you know, NAA is definitely one of the, the best conferences out there for anyone needing to expand their horizons and, you know, figure out how to grow their career by, you know, ed educating themselves and finding out what more they can know. It's, it's, a, it's very exciting for me. I mean, you know, it's obviously the lion's share of my of my work uh, in in my in my office life, and um, I always think of it as a meeting of the tribe because it really brings everybody together, and it really helps people have a sense of belonging. That's kind of um, really unique. I don't know any other event that can um, can draw together a whole industry like that, at least within multifamily housing, of course. Yeah, it's wonderful. So, uh, Valerie, it looks like uh, that we're ready to roll. So, um, okay. uh, without further ado, I just want to welcome everybody today. Um, uh, this is our sneak peek webinar. It's in the pause, Emotional Intelligence in Action. Um, this will be pre presented in its entirety at the 2017 NAA Education Conference and Exposition. Uh, for the first time, uh, the 2017 NAA Education Conference and Exposition will be held in Atlanta in, uh, June 21st through the 24th. We're certain that Atlanta's unique energy and southern charm will infuse every aspect of the event, uh, spurring networking and learning opportunities and making our gathering more worthwhile than ever before. Uh, you can join more than 10,000 apartment housing industry professionals in an exciting collaborative environment. You can gain inspiration and motivation from three general sessions featuring top-notch keynote speakers along with 60 breakout education sessions. You can also discover the latest products and services at the NAA Exposition uh, with exhibits from more than 450 suppliers. And now um, I'd like to introduce you to today's speaker, uh, Valerie M. Sargent is president of Yvette Pool and Associates. She's a skilled speaker, emotional intelligence certified trainer, executive consultant, investor, and multifamily expert. Valerie specializes in leasing, sales, marketing, customer service, EQ, uh, the topic of our uh, webinar today, and leadership. Her level one and two talent smart emotional intelligence certification has her taking companies teamwork, culture, and communication to inspiring new levels. After over 26 years in multifamily, this expert knows how to bring vitality to individuals and organizations. Welcome, Valerie. I'm so glad you could join us today. <laughs> Me too. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, some of you that don't know me may not know that, that I did kind of grow up in the industry. My mom was an apartment manager. She was in marketing and training. And um, I actually uh, started in the business when I was home summers from college. So I started out in the field as a leasing consultant, went into marketing and training myself, and then Yvette and I formed our own business in 2005. And Talent Smart is an organization that I actually went to to get a certification to teach their curriculum and be able to use their appraisal systems because it's so robust and well researched. And I wanted the ability to have a right to speak about this topic that I'm so passionate about. So I'll tell you a little bit more about how I came to the education and how I, you know, really got interested in emotional intelligence as we go on. So I, um, Clark, I think you have handed the controls over to me. I have indeed. I am not moving forward yet. Okay, so um, I'll advance for you and I'll pass again. So, um, okay. So let's, let's talk about when people work together and see if this is working for me now too. When people work together, you know, I like to think of it back in uh, the dating scenario too, how people bring a lot of baggage into a relationship. 
and people tend to bring baggage into the workplace as well. And Clark, it's still not advancing for me for some reason. I okay, don't let's know. Just, just a second and take uh, uh, and, and focus on this. I'm going to go ahead and um, pass the keyboard, and um, uh, you have to wiggle your mouse. Okay, wiggling mouse, mouse wiggle, and there you go. Let's try that now. Still not advancing. Try your, try your arrows. That's what I was using, actually. There we go. There's an there's arrow. A delay. There's some baggage. Okay. So there's the baggage that we are dealing with. And, you know, some people may have a small roll-on baggage. Um, some people have, you know, some other types of suitcases or baggage that they may carry emotionally. Um, we can't always predict what somebody's bringing into the workplace. And it's still not forwarding for me. <laughs> I, I've wiggled it. Sorry about this. Technical difficulties are a great example of how to show that you have emotional intelligence because some people get frustrated with those types of things. Um, but I see that that has just popped up. Clark, I don't know if you did it, um, but there's another yeah, I, time. I did it. I'll just, I'll just help you through. I'm, I'm why, don't I, why don't I give you a little, a little motion when it's time? How about that? Sounds good. I'm with you. How about the next one? <laughs> So some bags are, you know, larger and more colorful. You've got some really interesting characters, but as we click on and go to the next one, you never really know what is inside someone. So as they come into our office places, there are a lot of unknown or invisible things that we see. We may have people in our lives that we've known for a very long time and, and not know really what some of their, their deeper triggers and issues might be. Uh, and what they might be hiding from us. You know, in, in this scenario, I, somebody could secretly be an alcoholic, or you've got somebody that wears a lot of hats, or somebody that actually uh, likes clowns, and I don't. Um, so, Clark, if you can go to the next one for me. You know, you'll see that as we, we encounter people, some people have more baggage than others. And go to the next one, Clark. Um, that then, you know, some people try to handle it all on their own as well, but other people realize that they need assistance, so the next one will convey that. But sometimes you look at people and you see the next one and you're just like, oh, this is way too much for me to deal with and uh, they really need some emotional intelligence hope. So um, this is just to kind of get us started on a comical note because really as you think about people and when they have reactions, kind of think about their baggage. Clark, you can go on to the next one. Thank you. So what is emotional intelligence? That's something I like to see, you know, what you already know. So we do have a chat line there. I would love to see you guys just type into the chat line if you have any ideas of, of what it might be. What is your example? You know, what is your definition? What do you think emotional intelligence is? Just kind of type it right in there for me and let's get rolling. Um, it's always a little bit more fun if we can, can all go together. Because some people don't really know what emotional intelligence is. And I like to know, you know, kind of where we stand with that. So if you have any ideas, go ahead and type them in. I'll read them out to everyone. It's okay. You're not, not, not going to be exposed. <laughs> you can send it to the organizers only. You have a little chat button. If you actually hit that plus button, it'll subtract it out. And you can go ahead and type it in there. Are you guys all chicken? Come on, TV. <laughs> All right. Um, we have some shy people, and that's okay, too. So, Clark, let's go ahead and move along, because um, I don't have any chat showing up. So, let's go to the next slide, please. A lot of people think, actually, I think it's working for me now. A lot of people think it looks like this, that you're happy all the time, that you know, you're just in a good mood, that you don't ever get angry. Some people think that that's what emotional intelligence is. It's just being nice to people. But really, that's not what it is. So, Clark, it looks like I'm back in charge of the keyboard. So, um, emotional intelligence is actually being able to use your emotions intelligently to gain the performance that you wish to see within yourself. 
um, but also to use that with other people. It's your ability to recognize and understand your own emotions and then your skill at using that awareness to manage yourself and to manage your relationship with others. And um, that's Daniel Goleman there on the left. So the reason I got interested in emotional intelligence, in 2005 when Yvette and I formed our training and consulting firm, um, we were, you know, figuring out what direction we wanted to go, and I was at a training conference. And emotional intelligence was one of those topics that was being covered, and Daniel Goleman was speaking. And Daniel Goleman is actually the person who wrote the book back in 1995, Emotional Intelligence, and really brought it to the workplace. Now, he is a psychologist. He was a reporter on the brain and behavioral sciences. He actually was um, twice nominated for the Pulitzer Prize, and he's contributed to Harvard Business Review. He's riveted, riveting when he talks about it because he has so much research behind it. And I just was fascinated with it as a topic. So that was back in 2005 that I first encountered him. And then, you know, we, we just went along our way. Um, but what I found was that as I started paying attention to things, people were exhibiting exactly what he talked about in his presentation. And I realized that emotional intelligence is in every workplace. And it was something that we really need in our industry. Because I, you know, remembered being a young leasing consultant and coming up. So as a leader, let's talk about the core leaderships that are involved and how emotional intelligence plays into that. So there are core leadership skills that you actually use and, and that people really identify as kind of like the natural leadership skills. So these are strategy, action, and results. And you look at these, and these are pretty much the skills that get people promoted into leadership. You have, um, looking at someone, you have known them to be like a born leader. You're like, oh, they were just born to lead. They're awesome. And then they're also the foundation of effective leadership. So I'm not going to go into these in too much detail today, simply because I do want to focus on the emotional intelligence aspects of that, which are actually um, covered in more detail. But as you look at strategy, action, and results, you know, you're looking at what is your vision on things and your business acumen. You have to have the courage to lead. Action is being able to not only, you know, decide what you want to do, but to take action on it because a lot of people have good ideas that they never act upon. And then results is really focusing on that risk taking. But then we go into the adaptive leadership skills. And these are probably even more significant and important because they're a unique combination of your skills, your perspective, and your guided effort that really takes you to the level of true excellence as a leader. And those are emotional intelligence, character, organizational justice, and development. And you'll see that some of the things in the, the final three, you know, character involves your integrity, doing the right thing when no one is looking. And are you credible? Are you authentic? Are you someone that people trust? You know, your organizational justice, decision fairness, that really creates your team loyalty. And can information be shared easily? Can people communicate effectively back and forth? And then your development level. Do you believe you know it all or are you a lifetime learner that you really want to grow in your position, grow within your company, and help your company grow within its place in the market? And then also being able to develop others. There are some people that are scared to let employees go because they know that they will have to fill those shoes. But when you're creating bench strength, it's an asset for the company and it helps the company grow. But probably most important of these, uh, in my opinion, is emotional intelligence. And there are four components involved in your emotional intelligence. And this is sometimes known as, you know, EI is, is something that it's referred to. And then when it's talking about your emotional intelligence, that's your EQ. So it's actually composed of four different things. So your self-awareness, which is perceiving your emotions within the moment itself and understanding what your tendencies are, you know, how you normally react to situations, what do, does, it, what typically triggers you. Um, Self-management is what you do with, at that point, you take your awareness and it allows you to stay flexible, it allows you to direct your behavior in a positive capacity, you, know, you can manage your emotional reactions with people and to situations. Your social awareness is you know, kind of being able to read the room. 
picking up on other people's energies and emotions and really understanding what's going on with them at a deeper level. And then your relationship management aspects, that's actually using your awareness of your emotions and those of other people's to manage your relationships successfully. So within a workplace, anytime you put two people together, you've automatically got you know, two sets of baggage in there and your relationship management skills will help that so much. But emotional intelligence really starts um, with the self-awareness. So you'll see that it fits into your leadership skills there, you've got your personal competencies and your social competencies to focus on. Today we're going to be talking a little bit more about those personal competencies, you know, the self-awareness and the self-management, and you'll see that that's just recognizing it within yourself and then also being able to regulate that. And um, as we go forward and explore our self-awareness, you realize that there are some things that you need to be looking for. and it's it's understanding ourselves at a deeper level and you really want to understand what pushes your buttons or who pushes your buttons or what type of person pushes your buttons and a person with a high level of self-awareness has these aspects you know they're open to what's happening around them they value feedback from other people you'll see some people that get defensive when they're given feedback but somebody that is valuing it really wants to grow and be better they maintain a sense of humor under difficult situations. So in high levels of stress, you know, they're able to kind of balance themselves out maybe with a little bit of humor. They're able to see the bigger picture too, um, and they get perspective on a situation. If something happens that is a mistake, they, they learn from that, and then they take the lessons and reflect on that and go forward. And then they're also very open to change. So, the thing to keep in mind about self-awareness is that our past plays a huge part in how we interpret the behavior of other people. So you think about emotions in the workplace and things that happen. And I actually asked um, the question to some friends about, you know, what, what sets you off or what have you seen that was maybe inappropriate in the workplace and man I got some great stories boy we have some fun don't we with some of those residents that come in and they're yelling at us but also I heard some stories about coworkers that reacted inappropriately in a lot of my, my training that I do it's with regard to dealing with the team and there are certain things that just you know either set people off or make them really happy or sad or you don't know what's going on with people at a different level and um, some of the stories that I heard oh, there was an executive that got really frustrated and he took a bagel with cream cheese and threw it across the room and it hit this girl got you know cream cheese all over her suit, he never apologized, and um, somebody else that, you know, they were out working with the team, had some suggestions for the team, and apparently that supervisor got upset and asked to see that person outside and started yelling at them outside where the team inside could hear them and ended it with an expletive you, and um, that didn't go over well. She did call later to apologize, but, you know, these are the things that happen when we are triggered in some way. So you'll see that there are so many different emotions in the workplace and we have to just try to figure out how do we handle those. And so, you know, our brains are reacting to things and this is happening because we, you know, are relying on what we've learned in the past. You know, in the past when this happened, it was a bad thing. You know, you rely on your instincts. What did your parents teach you? What did your mentors teach you? What did you learn from previous managers? You know, these are people that teach you what they know, but sometimes what people know that they taught you is not the best way to handle a situation. You know, what is your image of yourself that you're trying to project? And if somebody is tarnishing that idea of your image, you may get defensive or upset about that. What are your beliefs that you hold? People have a lot of values. If somebody bucks up against someone's value system, that creates friction. You know, your goals, what are your lifestyles, the prior jobs that you've had, these are all things that play into our reactions and that we have to be really self-aware so that we can manage ourselves effectively. So the thing I want you to really focus on with regard to emotional intelligence is probably my favorite thing, our brain. Our brains are so amazing and powerful and they enable us to handle this all you know, if we know how to train them properly. So 
you'll see neural pathways over there. We have these neural pathways that have formed within our brain. So they're like little grooves in our brain that when one thing happens, then we're going to react in that same way every time because that's what we've been taught. The beautiful thing about emotional intelligence is that it is a skill that can be developed. So you can learn how to be more emotionally intelligent whether it's handling you know, conflict within the office within a team or it's handling conflict with your residents, you can learn how to react in better ways so that you have better results. So you'll see the amygdala over there on the right. I've highlighted that because your amygdala is in the center of your brain in the emotional center. And when you are processing anything that's happened, it goes through there before it gets to the thinking center in the front. So it actually has to go through your brain, whatever it is that you've just seen or just experienced, and it hits your emotional center first. That's why you see people fly off the handles. That's why they, they get so upset about things is because it doesn't get to that logical area of their brain until later. And the thing about your amygdala is it, it is your friend. It's just trying to keep you safe, but it can also cause overreactions. And it sends you into a fight, flight, or freeze mode. So you've got your, your sympathetic nervous system there on the left, and that's what gets set off. Like that'll cause your heart to beat faster. It'll cause you to sweat. It'll cause your eyes to dilate. You know, all of the things that happen when you are in a stressful situation, that's what causes those reactions. But your parasympathetic side is what calms everything down afterward. So um, when people are stressed out, they either want to fight back or they want to run away. Or sometimes when they're in a situation where they feel like there's no hope, they just freeze. A lot of dogs will do that when you actually see them. Uh, they're trying to hide from you when they're doing something wrong. They go into freeze mode. So. Um, this is something that you guys can keep in mind, um, SEL, so social emotional learning. The thing that, that really, you know, I guess grabbed me was that we're not taught in school how to manage our emotions. There are some schools that are now incorporating some social emotional learning. So this is something that's done for some children like of grade school age and having them picture a stoplight. And if they're starting to feel upset, you know, picturing a red light, actually visualizing that and, you know, encouraging them to calm down before they move forward with whatever it was that was setting them off. So that's something that you can even use as a visual yourself if you catch yourself. The self-awareness portion is being able to catch yourself if you're reacting to something. And, um, you know, if you start to feel a little bit better, you can picture a yellow light. When you get to the green, then you know you're good to go. But I would love to see more social emotional learning in our schools because right now we're not teaching people how to manage those emotions. They're figuring it out through parents, through coaches, through whoever might be helping them. And I remember being on a, a property one time doing a consulting project and there was a young lady there. She was an excellent Lisa. She was so good at her job. And she was having an overwhelming day personally. And brought it into the workplace and everyone was impacted by that because you know we are all bundles of energy and energy like that spreads and I took her into the office I said you know what maybe you need to ask your manager if you can have a personal day if it's really that bad because otherwise you need to learn to leave this outside the office and she started crying and this got me so much because she said no one ever taught me how to leave things outside and you know, I understood in that moment that people aren't taught these things. And it was really powerful to, to see. And, you know, I tried to give her some resources and, and some, you know, books and things like that that she could read. But, you know, this is something that is very important and we need to teach our youth and we need to, to teach one another. So that's why this work is so important to me. So here are some ways that we can keep emotions in check. You know, with regard to your emotions, you really are in charge of how you react. Your negative emotions, they challenge your mental strength and it's, it's not possible to not feel emotions. It, and you wouldn't want to do that anyway. But it is completely within your power to manage them effectively and to really maintain control of those emotions. And as you do that, I developed this phrase, it's in the pause. Because for me, that's where emotional intelligence happens. It's the space where emotional intelligence happens when we just pause 
before we move forward. Any time that we're uncertain about something, we take that time to really pause and think through it. You know, if we're self-aware enough to catch ourselves in that moment, then we're able to be far more effective moving forward. So I don't know how many of you watch the TV show This Is Us. To me, it's like the best people show on television. It's phenomenal. And um, this is a dad and his son. And the son has a tendency to get anxiety and starts going into a panic mode. And the dad will you know, take his, his head within his hands and just have him breathe with him. And that's what so many of us under stressful situations do. Our breathing gets shallow. Um, and we stop breathing altogether. Sometimes I'll hold my breath if I'm feeling stressed and I forget, oh, okay, I need to breathe or I could die. And, um, but breathing through something, if you catch yourself in a stressful situation, try to breathe deeper so that you're breathing through it and it will automatically impact that parasympathetic nervous system and it will calm you down. So if you're feeling like you've got a heightened level, then you can do that. Another thing that you can do is pause for clarity. You know, when it, do you really understand the situation at hand? Do you understand what is coming at you in that moment? Um, ask more questions of someone and, you know, reduce your assumptions. A lot of times we jump to conclusions about things. Um, we don't have all of the information necessary, so asking questions, getting more information, if we're pausing for clarity, that can help a situation not escalate as well. Another thing, and you can pause to reframe, that was one of the few images I found for framing that I liked, but reframing the issue, like maybe you're having a day where you feel more sensitive and you're, you can re reframe it like, gosh, you know, I, I think maybe I'm really sensitive today, or change the variables, look at it differently. If you had the same situation with a different person, would it set you off as much? Um, would it be upsetting if it were at a different time? Like if it were different timing, you know, would it have the same impact on you? That's another thing that you can look at. You know, pause to learn what your triggers are. So many times people have triggers that they have no idea about and they're always buried deep within the past, whether it's um, from parents who were neglectful to feeling like the odd one out. Um, to you know anything that has happened to you that maybe embarrassed you, um, it can be people. I had one gentleman after a keynote come up to me and say, thank you, I never realized that I kept reacting to my boss so badly because he reminded me of my abusive stepfather. So these triggers can be very powerful and you need to be mindful of those. The next thing you want to keep in mind is pausing to trust your gut. So there's a fine line between being, you know, trusting your gut and being impulsive, but really looking at decisions from all angles. And when the facts don't present another alternative, then you believe in your ability to make the right decision and do the right thing. Pause to quiet your mind. This may be with meditation. It may be with going out and taking a walk, but just stopping that chatter that's happening. You know, maybe it's listening to a song, a song that you find soothing. Anything that gets you to stop those voices because it's the negative impact from that roommate in your head that is constantly chattering that you want to avoid. And um, actually, there's a great book about that by Michael Singer, The Untethered Soul. You might want to look that one up. Pause to see the similarities and not the differences. When you are feeling so much conflict with someone, instead try to look for how you are alike as opposed to how you are different. We've had such a, a combative election season and I think you know, workplaces are still suffering from those people that were exposed to the opposite viewpoint that they didn't agree with. And um, there are a lot of people that you know, need to focus on the similarities and need to focus on the job at hand. Pausing to listen to your body cues as well, thinking about the last time you got really upset and what happens within your body. You know, what are the physical cues? What drives your emotion? You know, how often does it happen? Really keeping track of these things so that you learn to recognize them every time. Pause to know when you're just acting cray cray. You know, sometimes we just are a little bit on the other side of where we should be. So self-awareness can help you realize those moments too. <laughs> So there is a, a response that happens with a trigger. You know, we 
we have a moment where we can prevent it um, and recognize it and de-escalate it, or it'll completely escalate into a crisis mode, and then we have to cope with the aftermath and, and go into recovery. So um, that's something that we are going to talk about as we move forward in Atlanta. Some things to come in Atlanta in addition to what we've covered today are de-escalating emotional situations. We'll also talk about six leadership styles that affect your teams and productivity, how emotional intelligence impacts you, and how it also creates your company culture. Find out how your employees feel and the dynamics that you're fostering in an environment. You're going to work on employee motivation with me and also setting the tone. I'll give you some tips on how to develop your EQ strengths so that you can grow your emotional intelligence. So I actually had um, Cindy Babin, one of Kate Good's friends, shared this yesterday um, when she heard about this session and it just cracked me up because it's a take on uh, the help. And it says, you is stressed, you is getting yelled at, you is property managing. And that is what happens sometimes in property management. But what I thought was beautiful about her using this is the fact that Viola Davis's character in this movie was actually so emotionally intelligent. She had a, a young girl who was not paid much attention to, who had challenges because her mother wasn't always active in her parenting. And she would say to her, you is kind, you is smart, you is important. And what a beautiful gift to give to a child. So very emotionally intelligent. Thank you, Cindy, for sharing that because I thought it was a perfect note to end today on. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing all of you in Atlanta. It will be my second time there. I have some friends in Atlanta, and I'm really looking forward to experiencing NAA with everyone. I'm so grateful for this time today, Clark. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here with everyone. Oh my goodness, it was such a pleasure to have you. Um, I wanted to remind everybody who's attending today that this is the first in a series of six webinars. Um, you can see the other five that are coming up. Um, after the webinar is over, we'll send you a, uh, a link to the recording, so you don't have to worry about capturing this all now. It might be a good idea to have a look at some of the, uh, of the topics that we're going to cover. Um, I think that there's something for everybody. And, um, if you see something that one of your colleagues might enjoy or benefit from, uh, you might uh, let them know as well. These are all free, by the way, and uh, they're just intended to um, ramp up the energy as we move closer to the event. Um, uh, thanks to our fantastic and enlightened Valerie Sargent for the wealth of information she shared today. Uh, Valerie will continue the conversation in Atlanta. Uh, where we invite you to join us. The sneak peek represents just one offering in 60 breakout education sessions. So it's just like a little amuse-bouche, a little taste. Um, be sure to register for the event. There is a link on the, at the bottom of the slide that will take you to registration. Um, I already mentioned that the webinar has been recorded. It will be posted to the website. You also get a link to it so you can share it and you can reference back to it. And um, that is it. I think we're almost right on the money of 30 minutes. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in, and we'll see you in Atlanta. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye, Thanks, Valerie. Everyone. Thanks so much. Great to see you. You too.